Hi guys, today's video is going to be a bit different, so all I ask is that you watch the full video through please before commenting anything and then make your judgments. <laughs> Don't click off the video because it gets interesting later on as we go. So I have played Valorant for over a thousand hours including all the custom games and the uh, tournament games I played for my university. I've played for my university competitively and I have to openly say that these, that this was some of the most fun time I've ever had in my life. Playing for my university competitively was one of the greatest experiences I ever had in my life. I dedicated a lot to this game and, and I wanted to go pro in it for quite a while. However, there are a lot of things that have recently happened in Valorant which are destroying this game from within. As many people know, there are a lot of content creators, quitting Valorant, all citing the same reasons. Toxic community, um, dryness of content, only availability of smurf content, cringe idiating scene, TikTok scene, etc. So there is a lot of stuff like that going on. As you can see, there's just a ton of things. I'm quitting Valorant, the reason everyone's quitting, why everyone's quitting, quit Valorant, quitting Valorant, I'm done with Valorant, notable creators like Eggwick, etc. Valorant losing its own creators, matchmaking killers, there's so many things as you can see here. So actually, a while back, I kind of wrote an email to Riot Games. One second, Jesus Christ, it's kind of like doxing my desktop so I need to be careful. All the various work I have. So we are going to go over this game step by step. I mean this email step by step. So on the 10th of September, I spent the week prior doing some research and drafting an email to Riot Games and I sent them this email on the 10th of September. This email mainly contained what I felt could be done to improve the game from a gamer's standpoint, a content creator's standpoint, but most importantly a business standpoint to ensure longevity and sustainability of their product being Valorant. So, I started to hope this email finds you well. I'm writing this mail as I'm unable to find a contact detail because I couldn't find a contact detail to directly contact Riot, so I had to send this as a sub game support email and wanted to humbly share my opinion as a long-time lover of the game. Valorant is losing its spark for me and many other creators. It is sad as I want to play professionally and in the and grow in the content creation space playing Valorant and I want the game to thrive and grow as it is fundamentally a good game. Some of the grammar is a bit off. I apologize. I was very nervous writing this mail just as I'm very nervous making this video because it's the first time I've ever written a script and I'm reading off it. There are some suggestions that I have and I kindly request that these suggestions are passed on to the concerned department as I wasn't able to get the contact details of the department. I have to say this as a long-time player, personal dreams of going pro, playing Valorant, blah, blah, blah. But most importantly, from a business student perspective-wise, the email's a bit long, but these are my thoughts. And I was not tooting my horn by saying, I'm, just let me clarify, I'm not some brilliant marketer. I'm no Philip Kotler or anything. I was just utilizing the stuff I've learned over the years at university and all my experience as a gamer and as a person who plays Valorant to say what I would prefer the most in the game. So, the first thing I felt is gun changes are needed. For example, the Judge and the Odin. Especially the Judge. It's been overpowered for quite some time as we know. I mean, you have players all the time who are mad at it. I don't know. Wait, why am I... Okay, we're already on the Vandal, so I don't know if the Judge will be available. But... This is an op, okay. So the Judge has always been overpowered as we know. And the Judge has historically been a gun that has had too much impact in the game for its range. For example, you can be standing far away and the judge will just two tap you even stronger than a freaking Vandal. Then the other gun is this, the Odin. I have historically had a problem with this because I just believe it's stupid, I don't play it ever. But it's a gun which is designed to spam and I think that is just not healthy for a game such as Valorant. When you have a gun which is just going to be spamming around, it just eliminates any need for actual skill in a game. And I think that is a major problem in Valorant, honestly. When you have a gun which is so overpowered and so broken, where you can just stand in a corner and spam through walls, that doesn't really connotate tactical shooter. It really doesn't show that the game is a tactical shooter designed with skill and precision in mind. Does it? That's personally my thought but that's what I feel about the Odin, and I've historically hated it, but I also feel the same about the Judge. Oh, so, yeah, 
I felt the judge should definitely be nerfed as it is overpowered as hell. CS is fun, I feel, because the gunplay is more challenging and the higher skill ceiling makes it more fun and rewarding. The fact that it's tough to hit your shot but when you hit your shot it's so satisfying is something I feel is kind of what makes CS special. So I feel another way to buff the amount of Vandal and Phantom Bullets back to what they were which was 90, the ammo range was reduced, I mean the ammo and the reserve ammo was reduced, this comes, so I feel what should happen is they should nerf running and gunning and the RNG bullet hits that randomly happen during the game, making gunplay more consistent and not up to a lucky shot at times, as that will eliminate any need for having a gun such as Odin or the Judge. Now, this might be a bit of a controversial take, but I personally feel that we don't need a lot more agents. I played Apex Legends for a long time, I played a bit of Overwatch, and I feel that too many cooks do spoil the broth, you know? The amount of, so amount of agents they are putting into these games are just too many. It's getting oversaturated, and when something gets oversaturated, what happens is the rest of the pieces around said product or service fall apart and that's what's happening it's great to have agents but i feel that they should just balance all the current ones to make them equally viable instead of constantly adding a new one here and there now smurfing i am completely against smurfing i really really hate smurfing i feel it's come i know i've dealt i've played against smurfs i've played against radiance been destroyed i've played against immortals been destroyed i've played against ascendants been destroyed but also won in esports tournaments but but that was not smurfing, that was just a complete mess up of more like matchmaking. But in the game, there are so many uncontrolled smurfs. They need to be more vigilant, in my opinion, with smurfing and control it. So I suggested there is no need to smurf because I noticed a lot of people have to smurf. Let's say a streamer goes to Korea or to Japan for holiday. They have to make a new account, don't they? Because to play in that server, because it's their livelihood, it's their business and they don't have another option. But I feel that if they remove the region lock, just like in Apex Legends, you can select any server. That would make, that would actually remove a huge excuse for smurfing among content creators and among other players alike. And that way they could actually in turn use that to control more smurfing more and make punishing smurfing a lot more viable. So in my method, it would be all servers available. If I'm in the UK, I have access to Japan, Korea, Singapore, but there's a ping, ping threshold that you're allowed to play in, for example. So in order to not abuse high ping and ruin other people's matchmaking experience by playing at let's say 200 ping, 220 ping, maybe there's a max ping you can select such as 124 and all the servers under that are greyed out in your selection list. You can only select the servers above 124 ping to play when you're in the UK, so that could be Frankfurt, Stockholm, whatever. And then let's say you go for holiday to Korea or to Japan or to Singapore. Then you only have the APAC servers which you can select but the EU and NA servers are grayed out and vice versa you go to NA, NA servers may be available, some EU may be available till 124 but APAC is completely grayed out and you can't take that. So in my opinion that would kind of help eliminate the need for smurf accounts a lot. Now the next thing is e-daters, cringe people, toxic people. So I think Valorant needs to monitor voice chat much more seriously and maybe have an AI that detects stuff and can issue 10 minute mutes. I mean, I'm not saying an AI that's installed in your PC, but an AI software that is in the game itself. I know that is a security risk, but this is just a spitball idea. I'm not a software programmer, I'm not an engineer. These are just ideas I have. And can issue 10 minutes ban, 10 minute mutes and repeated offenders can bet a ban. For example, like let's say, XY person is being a misogynist or a jerk or anything. When they say stuff like you this, you did, you did, Valorant immediately detects those words or detects that phrase or is monitoring it constantly and issues a ban. Now, I know people say it's an invasion of privacy, but people need to understand that it's also, this is a video game. It's not, it's not real life. You shouldn't be discussing personal relationships, financial matters or anything personal on the game, even if it's your, with your best mate or your significant other. We have a normal system for this, which is called a phone call, a text message or meeting in person. It's very simple. This will stop cringiness firstly because, well, we do have a rather weird group of people in this community which, who like to say things which are inappropriate in nature. And it will also stop toxicity because then Valorant can monitor the things because people need to realize this is not a place for you to talk about your personal life. It's a video game, you're on a public forum. Would you go outside, let's say you are, I don't know, at a conference and start surrounded by people talking to them and start randomly chatting with someone about i don't know 
your health problems in your private regions or something. No, you wouldn't do that because that's inappropriate. It's the same system here. Now, this is about the content drought. I feel that there is a significant content drought and that's why streaming has kind of become slightly justified because a lot of content creators don't have a lot else to do and I don't really blame them for that thing. I, I think smurfing should be banned. I think Riot should even stop its content creators smurfing. But in order to do that, they need to give content creators things to do. Community servers, in-game map building where you can your community can build a map. Stuff maybe like Apex's rotation of modes. You've got a gun game mode, you have a this mode, you have a that mode, you have a knife only mode, you have a parkour surfing mode, something like that. And maybe whenever there's a winter holiday, celebrate it. Or like there's a summer theme or like let's say it's Chinese New Year or I don't know, any festival or something that's globally celebrated or whatever. Christmas or Equinox or whatever. Maybe change the map a bit. Like in Apex when it was Christmas time, we used to have a snowman on the map or the whole map would be covered in snow and Mirage Voyage would arrive with his Tinkle Bell song. Something like that. I don't have a lot of ideas. I'm just spitballing here, but this is what I would feel. Now, grinding. Mastery skins. Anyone who played Call of Duty knows what I mean, but oh, even Apex, where you can actually upgrade your skin through in-game achievements. Now, for, a for the Apex part of it, I said they should have free skins in the shop like Apex, where you can buy skins with in-game currency, which are free for the player. They don't have to be Reavers and Primes and all the really cool stuff, but just good-looking skins, even with no animations, which show hard-won achievements. So like, you know, in Card Mastery, you've got your Obsidian skin, your Blue this, that, stuff like that. Something like that should be employed in Valorant for the Vandal. If you get 5,000 headshots, you get a certain skin and you can upgrade it with 10,000 headshots. So just, just stuff like that. And maybe the Kingdom credits should be used to allow people to get stuff from previous battle passes, including knife and gun skins with in-game currency, but just make them a lot more expensive and difficult to earn. So that people actually have to grind to get those things. Right now, I think the Kingdom credits are kind of useless unless you really love the sprays, which I'm not saying anything against the other gun buddies, but it's not that useful. Now, this section may be a bit longer, but it's about esports mainly focusing on game changers. Uh, the female scene of Valorant. And before people go crazy, just hear me out. So, I think that Game Changers is a great scene for women's esports, but it needs to be marketed more aggressively and innovatively. So, for example, if you look at stuff like Nike, Adidas, they've done multiple advertisements featuring women's sport with prominent female players, showing their solidarity with women's sports. And Valorant should attempt some brand tie-ups or something to that effect promoting female esports athletes. Making more of a presence about it, I mean. So, they could showcase how empowering these females are in the space, inspiring young women to pursue their esport dreams through advertisement events. As advertisements, sorry, events for young girls to try, at, try out at schools, go to young schools and do like a scouting thing, like a, I don't know, somewhat like a combine, I guess you could say, like an NFL combine. Branch out from the normal and do this for VCT as well, even the male side. From a business perspective and seeing that GC historically has a lower view count than normal VCT, I don't really understand why. I think Game Changers and Valorant Champions have equally high levels of gameplay on the same level. But the advertising and the spectacle created in Game Changers is not equal. And it needs better marketing and better advertising by Riot Games and Valorant in general. And the organizations in general. Now another thing is Ascension I feel should be promoted more and have more surety with more teams included in the system like franchising slots should be more. I'm personally not a fan of the franchising system as I think that means even teams which may not deserve a spot just get a spot maybe because of their clout or their name and it becomes more of a money game but I feel that should be every team is unfranchised every year and they have to re-earn that through ascension i know people may hate this take but i feel everyone should have to do that to showcase so maybe more ascension events stuff like that and i know there's a lot of thing that players are having like too many events at once which is stressful but i feel that players salaries and salary cap should go up maybe to compensate that now um i feel ranks you should add a few more ranks maybe because sometimes the rank jumps because I've seen people iron bronze the minute they get the gold it's like a whole after they reach silver it's like a whole different ball game for a lot of people so maybe have a few more ranks for newer players and a lot of people say ascendant players and 
between ascendant and immortal i don't know how the hell i've seen conan creators say how is this person immortal i mean they don't play so maybe you have something like a carbon and obsidian a master legend whatever these are just ideas and also it'll give something more to grind through you know people give more to grind through i think the game is fundamentally great but it's ruined by these things which needs to be rectified i do love valorant i want to see it shine and grow for years to come thank you for taking the time to read my hail mail i do hope this is acknowledged blah 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 after i said this i kind of got two responses which are here i have blacked out the names of the people the support team was very polite and professional now my email was from the heart but it was also a last ditch effort for me to see how much the dev team truly cares about well what people from their community feel and this response i can i mean it doesn't speak for the whole game team behind valorant but i feel this response wasn't really as proactive as i would have hoped for I'm not trying to sound entitled or anything just saying that you know they could have showed a bit more interest than a generic response which seemed so ai chat gpt generated and bland i sent this email because i truly care about the game Apex Legends firstly was the first FPS I properly ever played and it was very important to me I had between 6000 to 6500 hours on it on my console and around the time I don't remember the exact season I don't know if it was 9 or 8 but around the time Fuse and Horizon or Horizon came out which I won came out I played a lot of Horizon I think it was season 7 I don't remember the game started dying for me it got so bad to the point where I left the game and I didn't want the same to happen to Valorant you know all right so Let's talk about toxicity in Valorant. Now, when I started playing Valorant over 2 years ago, the community wasn't too bad. Unlike CS horror stories, people were kind of kinder to each other. And I think there was less misogyny and I think less aggression in Valorant. People were more welcoming, etc. And that was what made me play Valorant over CS. But that uniqueness is kind of gone. So Ever since I started playing on Bahrain and Mumbai servers which I had to do for 9 months when I was in India those servers were filled with the most disgusting perverts in human existence who seemed to me make, make their main focus on insulting people people's mothers talking about sexually assaulting other players sisters if they were asked to do something like go be with me they didn't say hey bro do this to you or that threatening people being toxic and being generally just sorry excuses for human beings to the point where the few women i met on those servers told me they just play with their mics off all the time and they never even attempt to talk because of this situation couple this with the fact that these people are just generally jerkwads and annoying people it ruined the whole game for me for 9 months valorant became a shouting match with these people on bahrain and mumbai servers more than just like a fun game i had no option of switching to other servers in india because i didn't want to create a smurf account i mean i know i'm not that good a player but i'm completely against smurfing so i didn't really want to create a smurf account you know so i had to just keep putting up with that shit for 9 months and it wasn't fun at all when i came back to the uk and playing on the normal london servers which i normally do it was a lot better there's not as much toxicity at all but there are other problems the game in general has become more toxic there's more smurfing the players are more aggressive etc now listen i'm not saying the cs2 community is perfect by anyway 99% of the cs community so far is just full of assholes there's no denying that and at times it's worse than valorant because the toxicity involves stuff like shooting your own teammate griefing your teammates going afk etc kicking them in cs which you can't do in valorant thankfully now i think it's very stupid that and i think valve should remove valve should remove team damage because it's just not doesn't have a good place in a game like valorant i mean like counter strike because people abuse it i know it's supposed to be realistic and etc but it's just very stupid now one thing i have to say about cs which beats valorant is that They are tryhards, and there is no de denying that. That game is so full of tryhards, and of course, that can be a bad thing, but a good thing at the same time. So the thing with um, CS is that since people are such tryhards, they actually do try to get good at the game, no matter what. Are very, very focused on being the best they can, and they don't want to lose or throw games that I've seen. Like I've had a lot of people in rank do in Valorant. So that's one thing that I feel. is better about the CS community that's probably the only thing i feel better now i will openly say counter strike has a lot of problems for number one the main thing i feel is the anti cheat 
The anti-cheat is really bad. And I don't see why they can't have a kernel level 1 much like Riot. Because, I mean, I think it's time that every game in the FPS industry has a proper kernel level anti-cheat. It should be the industry standard. Now, I think 128 tick servers should also be the industry standard. And I don't see a reason as to why we don't have them in Counter-Strike. I think that that's something that CS needs to really implement. And that is very important. I personally believe that. Then, Pika's advantage and gun accuracy in spring definitely need to be fixed. But I am hopeful. I'll tell you why I'm hopeful. I never played Counter-Strike GO, so I didn't see Valve, and but I've heard the horror stories about how they never actually listened to the community. But part of me thinks they kind of hopefully have turned over a new leaf because I am seeing a lot of updates coming out. Now, I may be wrong, and if I am CS players, please be free to connect, correct me in the comments. But in general, Valve seem to actually care a lot about this game because they are consistently pushing up updates. They're not just like sitting quietly on their ass and saying, okay, we got the game out, now we can just chill. Now, I know that the game was rushed and maybe is a bit of a mess, but currently that doesn't mean that it's not a salvageable mess, which can be fixed. I believe that CS2 can become really good if Valve focus on sorting these problem out, problems out and actually focus on the community. But the problem with Valorant and Riot right now is that the game itself is stale. Other than the suggestions I've given, I don't know what can be done to improve it, I hope. I, there could be more. Now, at its heart, a game like Valorant, competitive should always be the main focus because it's an eSport, right? It's a sport. But your casual player base is the one that becomes pro. Like the pro players, a lot of them start being casual, right? Your casual players that become your pros and your casual players in general are the foundation that holds up the skyscraper of your eSport. And if that foundation is not strong, the whole building will come tumbling down. I still hop in for a DM or two right now. I'm kind of not playing anything. I've not played in a really long time. So I'm just messing around the range because I want to focus on my script and I, I'm very nervous. <laughs> So, but I now focus a lot more on my studies in my final year of university, my CV, my career, my health, fitness, etc, etc. But I have been gravitating more towards Counter-Strike whenever I find time to play. I've even joined the Counter-Strike esports team at uni and want to learn how to get better at the game from these guys because I'm really bad right now, but... I think that with time I can get better. I was very bad when I started Valorant. And then we went up, ended up winning quite a few games in our short esports year with the uni team. I had fantastic teammates, so that was a huge part of it. Even when I lose games in CS, I don't get upset. I just say, okay, let's go for the next one. It was a good learning experience. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I just wanted to take some time out to say all my thoughts about Valorant. I wanted to make this video a lot earlier, but I really didn't have the time. I hope you guys enjoy it. Take care for your health. Be kind to everyone you meet, even online, it doesn't hurt. And subscribe if you enjoyed it and i hope to see you in the next video or the live stream and thank you for watching have a good day bye bye